Ho, 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 it's Christmas time, and you know what that means. It's time to watch Santa Claus do some murdering. So, if you're a fan of Christmas movies and the Christmas spirit as a whole like I am, if you love Elf and White Christmas, Home Alone, other Christmas movies that I'm blanking on right now, and if you're also a fan of action movies, specifically Die Hard, then this movie, Violent Night, is easily the movie for you. It is an absolute goddamn blast. I went to go see it on a whim instead of seeing Avatar 2 because I decided that three and a half hours was just too damn long to sit down. And after watching this, I instantly knew this is a Christmas classic. I am watching this every single year. Maybe this will replace Die Hard in my lineup of Christmas movies because it's essentially Die Hard, but even more Christmassy. So Violent Night is the new Christmas movie starring David Harbour. It follows Santa Claus, who is basically just done with being Santa Claus. He's tired of the evolution of Christmas being ungrateful children and everybody asking for video games and yada, yada, yada. Until he eventually stumbles on a house of an incredibly, incredibly rich family being held hostage for $300 million that they have in a vault below ground. And he's about to skedaddle out of there and ignore them and go on his merry way, pun intended, until the little girl reaches out to Santa Claus and is like, Santa, can you please save us? I believe in you. And Santa's like, oh, I don't know. Until eventually he's like, absolutely, and goes on an absolute amazing killing spree, just annihilating everybody there and eventually saving the family. Oh boy, here I go killing again. Now, I just did the entire movie right there. That is the premise, that is the ending. But it doesn't matter that I spoiled the entire movie for you. Going into this, you know how it's going to go. You know how it's going to end. But that doesn't take away from the absolute blast that it is. Watching David Harbour's Santa Claus just kill every single person in that house in the most gruesome and creative and Christmassy ways. I've always been a big fan of David Harbour. I first discovered him watching The Newsroom years ago and also every single year subsequent that I watch The Newsroom on my yearly rewatch. He is most commonly probably known as Hopper from Stranger Things. Mornings are for coffee and contemplation. Chief, she's Coffee in your... and contemplation. But I've always been a big fan of his and from the first moment that you see him as Santa Claus, it just kind of hits you. You're like, oh yeah, David Harbour is the perfect Santa. How have we not come to this conclusion already? This giant jolly man is obviously the perfect Santa. It opens up with him getting drunk in a bar and talking to a mall Santa about how he's been Santa for a long time and he's just kind of kind of done with the whole thing and you really get the vibe from the very beginning after he gets drunk and stumbles off to his sleigh of reindeer and pukes off the side onto the bartender that chases after him. But let's talk about the plot for a minute and probably just actually a minute because it doesn't really matter all that much. It's just a vehicle to get to Santa murdering people with a sledgehammer. But it follows this family, as I said, extraordinarily rich and uh, home for the holidays and they're really just the most terrible family like it's difficult to care about what's happening to this family outside of the little girl that has nothing to do with it but they're all corrupt they're all evil they all kind of hate each other they're all vying for the attention of like the rich politician maybe mother they're just they're absolutely awful they're comically terrible people uh, to the point where they screw each other over trying to volunteer others to get tortured and the main dad is a little bit better and the main mom is a little bit better but at the same time you never really root for them either especially the dad because he's kind of a snivelly little wimp and then in the end you find out that he's actually the one that stole the 300 million dollars from his family which is why the bad guys can't get the 300 million dollars but he was gonna like abandon his family so that he could be with his ex-wife and his daughter. It's not really a plot that matters. Like I said, that's not what you're here for, but I needed to talk about it because whatever, it's in the movie. Now in the beginning, I was actually a little bit worried because the first couple guys that Santa fights, 
He's not really holding his own very well. He's just kind of winning by accident. He's getting the shit kicked out of him by guys like half his size most of the time. And going into this, I was kind of like, well, I don't really want to see Santa get his ass kicked. I went into this to watch Santa go on a killing spree and bash people's heads in and maybe do the thing where the mountain squeezed the guy's head and it popped like a balloon. But as it goes on, he kind of gets the, the hang of it. But it, where it really kicks into overdrive is when he gets stuck in a shed with like 25 of these guys with like night vision goggles. And they're like ex-military, CIA, what the fuck ever. Um, and he gets a sledgehammer and absolutely goes to town on these guys. Smashing their heads in, chopping their heads off, throwing them into wood chippers. And you get a little bit of backstory about Santa Claus to where... He used to be what I assume was a Viking like 1300 years ago. And you don't learn much more besides the fact that he was a Viking and he had a weapon called Skull Crusher that was a hammer. And he and Mrs. Claus have been together since then. And he kind of retired from being a Viking to be Santa. And that doesn't really explain much more beyond that. He himself talks about how he doesn't understand Christmas magic or what it is. And honestly, I've talked with some people about it. I kind of want a like sequel or maybe a prequel to this movie about how Santa became Santa when he used to be a, a pillaging Viking. Like that is a dope ass backstory. Like there's a part where he takes off his shirt, which, you know, David Harbour, so always nice. There's a part where he takes off his shirt and he's got the tattoos and then he stitches himself up and he goes into this and it shows like a flashback of blood dripping off of him. And I'm like, holy shit, I want to see that. I want to know how this bloodthirsty Viking turned into Santa Claus and where this magic came from. This is the only movie and I've seen hundreds of Christmas movies that makes me care about the lore of Santa Claus. The movie The Santa Claus with Tim Allen, which until Tim Allen went and became all Tim Allen-y, was my all-time favorite Christmas movie. That one is like a kind of about the lore of Santa and how Santa comes to be. That really never made me give a shit about Santa's history, and this one does. So please make us a prequel. Whoever is in charge of it, make us a prequel. But anyway, after he gets that, he absolutely becomes a killing machine with the sledgehammer. Right here, I kind of do also want to call out the villain of this movie, which is John Leguizamo. And he seems like he's having a blast with this role. He's amping it up and giving 150 percent and his backstory of why he's this evil bastard is like that he hates christmas because he had a bad childhood and now now he wants to be the grinch and take the christmas from this family and he he just fucking hates santa claus and when he finds out that this is the real santa he wants to kill him just out of spite that that he's the one that got to officially kill christmas because fuck christmas and it's a it's really great. I love the comical level bad guy that his motivation is that he's money hungry and that he hates Christmas. And he eventually gets his comeuppance in the end in the most brutal fashion ever with Santa using his little Christmas magic nose trick to send him up a chimney and he's holding John Leguizamo when he does it and John doesn't have the Christmas magic so when Santa goes up the chimney and he gets to the top, he's just holding like the bloody torso of John Leguizamo and all this blood and body parts are flying everywhere. And in that moment, I, I looked over at my kid, by the way, I took my kid to this movie. I looked over at my kid and I was like, this movie's so fucking cool. And he was like, I know it's amazing. The only part and the, like literally the absolute only part of this movie that left me lacking in any kind of way was the very end of the movie. Um, he gets his reindeer back, which by the way, the reindeer got scared away earlier because somebody shot at the roof and the reindeers are pussies or whatever. It's okay if I insult the reindeer. He insults the reindeer all the time. It's okay. But in the end, his reindeer come back and Mrs. Claus sent him a uh, skull crusher, his old hammer he had when he was a Viking and was like, hey, I think you might need this to do some murder in. And he's like, oh, my wife is so sweet. And then he flies off in his sleigh and then the movie's over. You never get to see, like if I could get like maybe like two minutes just two minutes of aftermath of the family freaking out that they're like oh my god that actually was santa that went on that killing spree and saved all of us but that's really it and that's just a tiny little gripe for this movie all in all it was amazing this is a new like i said this is a new staple for me for christmas time i might actually buy the physical copy on blu-ray of this movie and i don't own the physical copy of fucking anything anymore that's how amazing this is so please 
Go watch this. You'll have a blast. Maybe don't watch it with small children, even though it's a Christmas movie and they might be confused about that. But thank you for watching. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Check out my other videos.